Bumper stickers on your car give away way more information than you think. That custom sticker you made with your dog might show robbers that you're pretty outdoorsy and like to spend a lot of time away from your house or your car, leaving them exposed. Or that you have enough funds to buy a really expensive dog breed. The fact that you have a sticker saying that you have a kid on board could translate to, I'm easily distracted and always have my hands full. It's really easy to steal my car. Those stickers that you bring from vacation and place on your car also show that you might be away for a couple of months at a time or that you like to travel long distances. If you're proud of your family's activities, don't use bumper stickers to show it. It might lure unwanted people and give them unnecessary information, like the name of the college you go to or where you like to play golf. It's the same if you're part of a certain profession. Thieves can easily assume how many valuables they can find in your car by the amount of money they presume you make. Parking decals can even show where you work or live, which is something you should never share with strangers. The more your car is personalized, the more you'll be remembered. It's not always a bad thing, but if you ever offend someone in traffic, they'll be more inclined to report you to authorities if you have a custom license plate, a quirky color on your car, or a lot of stickers. If you don't intend to keep your car forever, you should consider what it would be like before selling it. A lot of bumper stickers on a car can steer buyers away. Not to mention, it's a real hassle to remove those decals since they leave a lot of sticky residues behind. They can also damage the car's paint layer. However, one sticker that can keep thieves away is one suggesting that you have an alarm or a tracking system set up in your car. You should never keep electronics in your car for longer periods of time. Firstly, they can attract unwanted attention from people looking for easy money. Not to mention leaving your phone or charger at extreme temperatures can damage them permanently. The fact that you use sunscreen every day is really praiseworthy. Just remember not to leave the bottle in the car. Leaving sunscreen exposed to the sun can reduce its effects since overheating causes the chemicals to deactivate. Specialists recommend that sunscreen be stored at temperatures below 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You should even keep those driving glasses of yours away from direct sunlight. Make sure you place them in your glove box or take them with you when exiting the vehicle. Exposure to direct sunlight can damage the lenses and the plastic or metal frame, damaging their fit and efficiency against sun rays. If you've ever bought hairspray, spray paint, or deodorant, you've probably noticed that all these cans have storage temperature recommendations printed on them. That's why you should never leave them exposed to extreme temperatures in your car. These bottles can rapidly expand and explode, not to mention their contents can be highly flammable. Try not to leave a plastic water bottle in your car either. If it's been sitting in the heat, you could end up consuming harmful substances like BPA, a chemical compound used in manufacturing various types of plastics. They can transfer from the plastic into the water after some time. That's why even bottled water has an expiration date on it. It's not like water can expire, it's written there so you know the date up until the water is safe to consume, safe from the chemicals in the plastic. More so, a water bottle left on the seat of a car in direct sunlight can act as a magnifying glass for the sun's rays and become flammable. If you want to make sure your groceries are safe to consume, never leave them out at an unsafe temperature. Whenever you have to buy perishable groceries, Leave them in temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for no longer than 2 hours or just 1 hour before the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Best if you can buy meats or dairy last from your grocery list. That way, you get home faster and rapidly store them in your fridge. Even in the cold season, you should never leave beverages unattended in your car. Water, juice or soda can expand in their containers if frozen and cause a huge mess. I know it's way more comfortable to throw your damp clothes in a bag after leaving the sauna or the swimming pool. Just make sure not to leave them for way too long in your car. Those clothes can easily gather mold or bacteria that can get stuck inside tiny places in your car. Not to mention, you won't be able to wear them ever again. Hang them up to dry as soon as you get home to avoid damaging them. Hey, having fresh breath is something that I always worry about too, especially when I'm on the road. But I always skip the usual pack of gum since it can become gooey and stick to the things in my car, especially when left in the scorching heat. It's not so good in the winter either, since it can become frozen solid, making it flavorless and dangerous to your pearly whites. Best to opt for gumdrops if you really need to keep something minty in your car.
Your handbag is one of those things you should never leave unattended in your car either. We often store valuables in our bags, like the keys to our houses or our wallets, so it's best to make sure that you never leave them in your car to potentially attract thieves. If you need to leave it there, place it in the trunk. It's less visible for most cars. Your car shouldn't be a safe place for your important documents. Either shred or mail them as soon as you can. If your car were to be broken into, your contracts or tax forms might expose vulnerable information about your life. Most people leave documents facing up on their passenger seat, which makes them even more readable for curious people. Wax crayons are useful during long trips to keep youngsters entertained, but it's safer to remove them from the car or place them in an airtight box as soon as you arrive at the destination. These art supplies melt easily and can stain your car seats. Always plan your trip in advance if you intend to buy houseplants. If you know you won't be heading home straight after, make sure you purchase sturdy plants. Even mild temperatures of 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit can wilt away delicate plants within the hour. More so, if its leaves touch the windows, the cold glass might ruin the foliage. Even if it's a bigger plant, don't transport it in the trunk or let them stick out the window. And if it's really cold outside, make sure you warm up your vehicle before placing the plants in. Always make sure to drive with your shoes on, no matter how short the distance is or how hot it is outside. You might have to brake rapidly and find yourself unable to apply enough force with a bare foot. More so, if there's an emergency and you need to step out of the car, you might hurt your feet or waste time putting your shoes back on. If you like to travel with your bike or your scooter attached to your vehicle, you need to take special care of those pneumatic tires, those that are air-filled and need a pump to inflate. They're also on the list of things not to leave in the car on a sunny day. That's because the extreme heat can cause the air inside the tires to expand, at times even resulting in a blowout. Those high temperatures can also weaken the rubber, making you more exposed to a flat tire. If you accidentally locked your car keys inside the car and can't get in, don't hurry to any rash decisions. Take a roll of broad duct tape, cut a length of it and stick it vertically to a window glass. Now repeat it five or six more times, sticking the lengths of tape next to each other. When done, unstick the bottom parts of all the lengths on the window and ring them together in a single tail that you can hold and leave it to hang for the time being. Now, cut another five or six lengths and stick them across the ones you've already stuck so that they hold fast. Once everything's ready, hold the tail you made previously and three, two, one, pull down. With a bit of effort, the window will slide down a bit and you'll be able to stick your hands between the glass and the frame to push it down further until you can get inside and fetch those keys. Not all of us are great parkers, let's face it. You might have scraped your car a little now and then when you weren't being too careful. Pick up a few of those awesome rubber chickens that squawk when you squeeze them. Warning, you will look ridiculous, but you'll never scratch your car up again. Okay, get them out before parking and hook them up to the front and back corners of your car. When you get too close to a post or wall or someone else's car, the chickens will belt out their epic song. And if you keep going anyway, they'll act as a soft bumper to protect your paint job. Leave your wipers up in the winter. It'll prevent them from sticking to the windshield, so you don't have to scrape them off and break the rubber. People warn against it because they say it ruins the arm's spring and makes your wipers more vulnerable to thieves. But A. The wearing down the arm thing isn't true. The springs don't lose their elasticity. And B. Who's going around stealing people's wiper blades? If you're still going to keep the wipers down, or you forgot to put them up on a freezing night, run the AC. Yes, cold air will defrost the windows just like the heating does. It works by dehumidifying the air. Great trick for when your heating is busted. Actually, you can prevent your windshield from getting frosty in the first place. Spray a three parts vinegar to one part water solution on the windows the night beforehand. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Your wipers will break down sooner or later, even if you keep them up every winter. If the rubber's coming off and the metal arm is scraping your windshield, just put a long sock on it. It's a temporary fix, but it works. Just get yourself some new blades ASAP. 
to save yourself some time and nerve on a winter morning, protect your car doors from getting frozen overnight. This happens because of snow that gets into the seals, turns into water, and freezes again in there. To stop that vicious circle, put cooking spray on all the inside rubber parts and then wipe off the extra with paper towel. Car batteries don't really enjoy extreme cold temperatures. In fact, when the frost is extreme, it can be really harmful to your car battery if you don't warm it up first. Just turn your headlights on for a little bit and then turn on the car engine. You can also warm it up with the radio and listen to some music to make the waiting more enjoyable. When your windows fog from the inside, it makes driving pretty dangerous. Luckily, a humble potato can come to your rescue. Take a clean and raw one. Cut it in half and rub one half on the windows from the inside. It will clean them and also create a protective layer to prevent fogging. Then, let the potato coating dry without touching it. This trick will also work on your shower door and bathroom mirror. If you're stuck in the snow or mud, you can use your car's rubber mats to get yourself out. Put them under your tires to add traction. The kitty litter trick works too. But who's driving around with that in their car? Oh, don't forget your mats back there! In case the car mats don't help, try deflating the tires a bit. This will help increase the surface area of the tires and again, get them more traction. Remember, you can only make them look slightly flat and as soon as you get out of the snow, you gotta pump them back up. If your car ever got stuck in mud or sand on a rainy day ride through the woods, you know how scary it gets. The good news is, you can get out using a shovel and some patience. Try to clear as much mud and sand as you can from around the wheels using a shovel or even your own hands. If your car still won't move, try switching from reverse to drive to start gaining momentum and deflate your tires to increase their surface area. Getting your speed up to 70 miles per hour for 10 miles once a month on an open freeway in clear dry conditions of course evaporates any water and gas buildup in the engine and exhaust system. It gets you there a little bit faster, but again, only do it when it's appropriate. If you often can't find your car in a huge parking lot, remember to take a picture of the spot or row number as soon as you pull in. There's also GPS apps that help you find your car among endless parking spaces and huge garages. If you didn't take a picture or decide not to download that app, you can find your car with the help of a remote key. The signal doesn't reach? Then bring it closer to your head. Fluids in your head boost the conductivity of key signals. It's crazy, but it works. Those metal bars in your headrest aren't only for adjusting the height. You can also use them to break the windows in an emergency. It works better if you push it into the gap at the bottom of the window, pull it towards you, and the glass will shatter. If you don't have a phone holder in your car, or maybe yours suddenly came unstuck, you can thread a rubber band through your AC vent. Insert the rubber band through the top of the vent and pull the other half through the bottom. Then put your phone in it and you're good to go. When you get out of the car, your clothes sliding against the seat fabric create some static charge. Seems innocent, but not when you're at a gas station. When you grab that metallic nozzle, a spark can happen. Just like when you accidentally shock someone, right? Only, instead of giggling and seeing if you can do it to your friend again, that tiny spark can light up those gas vapors. To dispel any electric charge on you, just touch a metal part of your vehicle before you reach for the nozzle. Speaking about gas stations, when you arrive to refuel, you might spend 10 minutes looking for your gas tank, only to find out it's on the other side of the vehicle. Fortunately, you don't have to play the guessing game anymore. There's a little arrow by the fuel icon on your dashboard that tells you which side the tank is on. That one saved my bacon numerous times. Dishwashing liquid can be a good, cheap way to clean your car windows and windshield. It will help you get rid of anything from fingerprints to dog slobber. Just grab a damp and warm washcloth, use a drop of dishwashing liquid, and start cleaning. Plungers are actually pretty useful outside of kitchens and bathrooms. For example, you can use a cup plunger to fix small and medium-sized dents in your car. Wet both the dent and the plunger and use it as if you were unclogging a drain. Push and pull until it comes out. 
one thing that makes coke an excellent and cheap way to remove tarnish and rust from metals and alloys is that it's carbonated and rich in phosphoric acid. So that's two things. Just spray the rusty surface with coke. And then use a brush or a toothbrush if the area is small to break it up. Apply and scrub as necessary. Don't forget to clean the scrubbed area with water after you're done. The heavier your vehicle is, the more gas it uses. The engine has to burn through more of it to keep the car moving. So, if you keep two picnic chairs, your dumbbells, your golf clubs, and a bag of clothes you wanted to donate months ago in your trunk, it's really high time you gave it a good cleanup. Do you try to park at the center of a designated parking spot? Well, I've got news for you. Parking along the edge is better. First of all, getting right into the middle of the spot is tough. You'll always miss by a few inches to the left or right. Say you park a couple of inches to the left, and someone on your left parks a couple inches to their right. Now you're closer to each other than you'd want to be. And chances are, you won't be able to get out of your car from the driver's side. If you drive along the left edge line, you'll see how your car fits exactly where you want it to. And your neighbor on the left will want to do the same to have some space on their right to open the passenger door. This way, you'll both have enough room to get out of your cars without trouble. And if everyone on the parking lot did that, they wouldn't have any problems with spacing at all. Parking lots are often the size of my hometown, so finding a car in there can be a real challenge. A sure way to do it is to make your phone remember where it is instead of your brain. All you have to do is ping the location on the map and let the GPS app guide you back to the vehicle. Ever opened your car door only to see a cyclist speeding right at it at the last moment? You'd be lucky to close the door before the accident. To avoid that, practice the Dutch reach. If you're in a right driving country, the door is on your left. As easy as it is to just open it with your left hand, make some effort and do it with your right. Stretching like this, you'll automatically look into your rear view mirror and won't miss a cyclist coming your way. If you're in the passenger seat, do the opposite and use your left hand to open the door. It takes time to get used to this habit. One of the easy ways is to remember the slogan, reach, swivel, look, open. The recirculation button isn't the most popular one, but can actually be super useful when you're stuck in traffic amidst exhaust gas. It recirculates the air inside your car, shutting off the airflow from outside. In the summertime, you can also do it to keep the air inside cool and refreshing. Now this one is more common sense than anything, as most modern car alarms have a built-in system to prevent car theft, effectively locking everything in your car if you use it. But it's handy to keep it separate from your car keys in case you get mugged, thrown out of your car, or if, for whatever reason, you left your keys inside the car. You probably keep your phone with you at all times, but when you're driving, it might distract you. So why not put it in the glove compartment to focus on the road ahead? Well, two reasons, heat and cold. If you put the phone out of sight, you might forget about it and leave it in the car when you go out. And cars tend to go extremely hot or extremely cold very quickly, depending on the weather outside. If it's hot, the temperature inside the car will reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit and over in under an hour. Phones don't like being exposed to such heat, so your electronic bud, forgotten in the glove compartment, may literally melt there. The battery might leak and you'll lose it for good. And if it's winter and the weather's freezing, your car will cool down way too much in no time as well. Not hard to guess that your phone won't take that kindly either. After a prolonged period of time in the cold, it might have problems with its display. Its battery life may grow shorter, and it may start shutting off on its own. In the worst case scenario, the cold might even crack the display. So hey, best take your phone with you on your way out. Everyone knows there are handles above each of the doors in any car. They come in handy when you need something to hold onto in case the ride gets too crazy or the road starts to get too twisty-turny. You might have also seen people hanging fresh dry cleaning or clothes on them. But perhaps you didn't know 
that the original purpose of these handles was to help you get in and out of the car. A must-have for bigger vehicles, right? In most minivans and some crossover SUVs, you can pull down a convex mirror from a special compartment in front of your rearview mirror. Why do you need a second mirror over your head? It helps you keep an eye on the kids, pets, or just passengers in the back seats without taking your eyes off the road for a second longer than needed. This tip will be more or less useful depending on the car, but see if you can find any of these storage spaces in your ride. It could be a little pop-out compartment near your rearview mirror that's just perfect for your cell phone or shades. Some cars have a secret hiding spot behind the climate control panel. You can also try checking under the passenger seat or behind the front row if you have a crossover. Chances are there are easy to remove bins so that you can drop whatever you want, like your dirty shoes, in there and take them out and clean them afterwards. Have you ever noticed a little snowflake light up on your dashboard? This is the frost or freeze warning, and it lights up automatically to inform you that the temperature outside has dropped so much that the roads are likely to freeze. When the snowflake is yellow, the temperature is getting close to freezing, probably around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. When it's red, it's at or below freezing 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't confuse this snowflake with the winter mode indicator though. It normally also looks like a snowflake or just a W. It turns on and off when you push a button to make your car move in second or third gear. It prevents your tires from spinning and slipping when you're driving on icy roads. If you ever made a mistake of pumping the wrong fuel into your car, or did it out of curiosity for whatever reason, and I mean fueling diesel into a gas-powered car, or vice versa. You simply know nothing good comes of it. Diesel-powered cars simply can't use gasoline, and gas-powered ones can't go on diesel. If you fill your tank with the wrong kind of fuel, your car will probably go on for a short while until the right sort is depleted. But when it is, the vehicle will just stop in its tracks. The inner workings of the car won't allow the wrong fuel to get it moving. And worst of all, it might even break your engine. So better use the fuel your car is made for. You probably didn't know it, but prolonged concentration on the road may make your brain tired and snooze with you none the wiser. It's called microsleep. And it could easily become a cause of a crash on a busy road. So when you've been driving for more than two hours, Best pull over and let yourself outside to stretch your legs and breathe some fresh air for about 10 minutes. This is especially important when driving at night. The darkness and the monotonous hum of the engine might make you sleepy in no time, so do yourself a favor and refresh your brain every now and then. When you're traveling down a highway or a country road, little pebbles might come flying your way. They aren't that dangerous, and you might not even notice the damage. But if you look closely, you can find small scratches on your headlights. If you plan to stay on the road for a long time and rain catches you on the way, your headlights might fog up because of that damage. They need to be repaired. But in the meantime, use a piece of transparent adhesive tape. It will prevent the moisture from getting in through the gap and the headlights from fogging up. You'll probably agree that no one can ignore the terrible screeching of car brakes. Most people get freaked out and rush to a mechanic to have their car fixed. What they don't know is that the most likely cause of these terrible sounds is rust on the brake pads. Luckily, this rust can be easily removed by brushing, scraping, or blasting off. Some people do it themselves after watching a couple of YouTube videos. Most garages will be happy to do this procedure for you for a modest compensation. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.